would like to start my sermon asking a question. Where do Christians go in the age to come? In the age of ages, where are Christians going to live? Yeah, please. What are you, it, it can tell us about our hope. Where are, where are we Christians are going to spend our eternity in the age of ages? Wherever Jesus is, wonderful. Some said uh, heaven. Kingdom of God. In kingdom of God, in kingdom of Jerusalem, okay? Wherever the king is. So we all are going to put up in king's palace. <coughs> in paradise. Okay? Any more responses? Where are we going to spend our eternity? Nelson and I were saying we are going to live on this earth or underground. <laughs> Just I'm misinterpreting the sign. <laughs> okay. Uh, having said that, I would like to move into my sermon. The New Jerusalem, we read in the scripture reading. We'll come to this a little later. But if you read the Bible, especially uh, Revelation chapter 21, we find that John was giving description of new heaven and new earth. And he is prophesying and telling us and reminding us what Jesus has already prophesied and what Paul already prophesied through book of Romans that is about new heaven and new earth and so there is going to be a new heaven and new earth as somebody said you we are going to spend our eternity in new heaven what are we going to do I mean what what is the use of this new earth what is going to happen with this new earth if you're going to live in the new earth what is going to happen with, what is the reason for this new heaven again? There was already a heaven. So what is the need for this again new heaven? Where are we going to spend our eternity? In the new earth or in the new heaven? What is this new earth basically? Is it like God is going to remove whatever we are living now? Nelson and us hope will be uh, gone. We are not going to live on this earth. Okay? He is going to remove this earth and again suddenly boom, a new earth is going to come into this world? No. God, when he has created, he has committed himself to the creation. He not only created, he is committed to the creation. That is the very reason he came onto this earth to save everybody in the earth. And Paul says the earth is crying for the redemption. The earth is going to be redeemed. The earth was full of sin once upon a time. Jesus uh, came here and solved that problem of sin. So is he going to leave this earth into fire, into extinction? No. The reality is this earth is going to be transformed into a new earth. How is it going to be transformed? Is like this. Just as a caterpillar is going to become a butterfly. Is the caterpillar the same? No, it is a new creature now. It's a butterfly. Is a butterfly something new or something different came? No, it is the same caterpillar it transformed into a butterfly. And it is no more a caterpillar. It is no more old. It is a new creature. And it is not going to be the same old experience because it is no more a caterpillar. It is a butterfly. In the similar way, the new earth and new heaven are going to come where God is redeeming this old earth and old heaven and we all are going to enter into a new redeemed experience of life. Then in the new earth and new heaven. 
As Christians, many a times we think we are the people of heaven. We, our citizenship is in heaven. So we are focused on heaven. We don't have anything to do with this earth. The reason I brought this up is because to remind you again that we are still responsible in this earth. And this same earth, God is going to redeem and going to make a new earth. If the caterpillar says, I'm, uh, I'm going to be a butterfly and this butterfly is something, a new thing. So I don't need to uh, eat and I don't need to feed myself what happens the caterpillar will die like a caterpillar so it is very important for we Christians also it is a, it is our responsibility that we should take care of this new I mean this earth and many Christians think that we are going to live in heaven if we are going to live in heaven then Bible is going to be disappoint you Bible disappoints us because Bible doesn't end with we Christians going to heaven. Every time we talk about gospel, we say we are on our way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to heaven, which he never said. Jesus said, I am the only way to the Father. He never said he is the only way to the heaven. We can see all the bumper stickers. Jesus is the only way to heaven. So we are not going, the book, sorry, book of uh, Revelation doesn't end with saying Christians leaving this earth and going to heaven. But a new Jerusalem will be coming down onto this earth. So we are going to live in this new Jerusalem. I don't know. In the book of Revelation I read about it. Whether it reached heaven or earth or not, I did not find. I saw it is coming down from heaven. It reached earth or not, I don't know. So basically I can tell only this much that we are going to live in the New Jerusalem. What is the first thing you want to find in New Jerusalem? Hmm? God, wonderful. If it is a Jew, a Jew would like to find the temple. <laughs> Because they are so very much into the temple. As soon as they go to the New Jerusalem, they may want to find temple. If temple is not there, they not there. Jerusalem is not Jerusalem. The speciality of all this earth, it, uh, Jerusalem is depending on the temple. This Jew, once he goes to New Jerusalem, he also may search for the new temple. But <coughs> John witnesses and says that there is no temple in the New Jerusalem. We have seen throughout the history how many people have died, how many fights have taken place, how many wars have taken place just because of this simple thing called temple. And even in every culture, in every religion, in every, every country we can witness that these fights have taken place and have uh, claimed the lives of millions of people and uh, they are still happening even today. We can witness even in our own country, everywhere, we can, in every culture, we can see people were fighting for the temple. There are, we don't know the reasons behind, in many places, there are political reasons behind the fightings over the temples. There are uh, uh, religious reasons behind fighting the temples, fighting over the temple. There are financial reasons, economical reasons behind fighting, the, fighting for the temples. And there are uh, reasons to gain power. For that sake also people were fighting for the temples. And thousands of Jews even today are eagerly waiting and they are ready even to give their lives for their temple. What is this temple? What is the soul? What is the importance of this temple actually? And now God is saying that there will not be any temple in New Jerusalem. That means we can be happy. There won't be any jihads in New Jerusalem. There won't be any five religious wars in New Jerusalem because there is no temple. So we can be peacefully <laughs> live in uh, New Jerusalem. First description of the temple we can find is from book of Genesis. In book of Genesis, the creation account is the first description of temple. See, the author Moses was writing this during the days where he was surrounded by the people, uh, all the people around him are people who were worshipping natural forces, people were worshipping moons, people were worshipping sun, people were worshipping trees, people were worshipping fishes, animals. And in those cultures he is sitting and he is writing this thing and saying, 
you are worshiping the sun but let me tell you the sun is not the uh, not the god or the divine but there is even greater person the god who created the sun and he is telling the right worship is not worshiping the sun not worshiping the moon not worshiping the tree or anything it is worshiping the one who created all this so first message moses was communicating through his uh, uh, through book of genesis is <coughs> He is reminding people about the right worship. The right worship is always attributed to the right person who created heavens and the earth. And even if you look at uh, the creation, there is an order, right? We can see first God created heavens and the earth, then he, created, he separated the waters, and then uh, uh, he brought forth the... Uh, uh, sun, moon, star, and then the plants, and then animals, fishes, and at last he brought humans. If any of you are familiar with the uh, liturgical worship, is it not the same form we use in the liturgical worship? First people come, and then altar boys come, and then the priests come, and they all come together and offer worship to the Lord. There is an order in the worship. And the similar order has been explained through the creation. So the creation is a representation of a true worship. It, the creation is speaking about a true temple where Adam becomes the first priest of this temple and offers worship, uh, 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 taking along with himself entire creation and offering praises to God. That is the business he was put in in Eden Garden. That's what he was doing. But unfortunately, we all know what happened later. Adam was the first priest, not just me. Augustine considered Adam was the first, first priest. And he explained uh, the creation as a temple. And uh, it was an organism which offers true worship to God. Temple is always about rights, right praise and right worship. And then we can look at the story of Noah, Noah's Ark. We all know very well all kinds of animals and creatures were inside the Noah's Ark. And Noah as a high priest was offering and doing the work what I, Adam was supposed to do in Eden Garden. And he was also doing uh, from his Ark. That is a symbol, that's a picture of true worship and right worship. And then we can see another picture, Tower of Babel. Where people have come together, all of them have come together instead of saying praises to God and they were so very focused upon themselves, they wanted to invade the heavens. So this is a sign of wrong worship. Right? So temple is always about the right worship, it leads us to heaven and this is a wrong worship, that's why what happened? It was thrown down. And then we can find an interesting story that God was not disappointed. God found one single person named Abraham. And this person was interested and he heard the voice of God. And as he was offering his own son Isaac as a sacrifice unto the Lord, he also symbolized and he also started, in other words, he also again resumed the true worship of the Lord. And what is the first picture we can talk about? Over, what is the first picture that comes to our mind when we talk about the temple? The first and main picture, the main concept that was built uh, based on this particular incident that is, that which we have discussed previously, the story of Jacob. In, but I'm, I'm not talking about all the incidents in the story of Jacob, but the story of Jacob where he had a vision of heaven, which he called Bethel, the house of God. He, as he was sleeping, he found a vision where angels were coming down and going up and down. This access was taking place. That is the theme, that is a perspective for the temple actually. The main perspective for Jewish temple is heaven and earth coming together. I have discussed so much about it in many of my sermons previously. <coughs> Heaven and earth coming together. Even many a times we think heaven and earth are so far from each other. They are not so far from each other. They are overlapping always. For Jewish people, heaven and earth are very close. They cannot be separated. 
it is just like we all know in two uh, two dimension world we know x axis and y axis if x axis and y axis is earth heaven is z axis how far is z axis from x axis and y axis how far is that it is connected you cannot separate it it is so very closely connected and temple is a symbol of that temple is a symbol where heaven and earth are merged and have come together that is the picture god gives through this experience uh, jacob had uh, through his vision that's why you know what the word temple jewish people did not use the word temple for their temple for a, a long time they started using it nearly after Babylonian captivity. Before that, they didn't have the word called temple. They used to call it house of the Lord. This is a place where God is there. He is available and he comes and meets his people. That is the picture they have. The moment temple we, we bring, it brings some kind of religiosity. It brings some kind of uh, sacrificial system. It brings some kind of ritualistic uh, perspective into our hearts. The moment we hear the word house of the Lord, it brings the sense of family. It brings the sense of relationships and house. So that is what Jewish people had in their minds when they call about temples. If it is just about sacrifices and these, they could have built hundreds of temples. You know, Jewish religion is the only religion which is for only one temple, fighting for one temple for more than 1500 years. For only one temple. They can build many temples, no? They are not. <laughs> they are concerned about only one temple. Because so they because they were very so very closely related in their hearts that this is the house of the Lord where we can meet our God. That's a picture they had. Unfortunately, in their understanding only some distortions have come. The first distortion we can see from the tabernacle. We all know about the tabernacle. Okay, God came down. Before the tabernacle built, God came down. And Moses said, God wants to meet you all people. What did Jewish say? Jewish people said, no, 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 no. We are not we are able to handle with him. We are, it's very difficult to handle with him. Moses, what you do is you talk to him and tell us what he wants. And we will do. Our one, another symbol, Moses went on to the Sinai mountain and his face was, uh, you know, uh, dazzling and it was so bright. What happened, happened? First thing they did was put a veil on the face of Moses. It was not God who put that veil. It was not Moses who put that veil for himself. It is people who put that veil because they could not see Moses. So first thing came, uh, first distortion of this temple perspective where heaven and earth are coming together, where God comes and meets his people, is through the tabernacle, where in the tabernacle, first the curtain has been introduced. And what are the, we all know what happened later, like, you know, first the curtain was there, and the structure we all know very well, most holy place, holy place, and the temple courtyard, and then open place. This was the picture of um, what we call uh, this, this was a picture of tabernacle first division was introduced and then came the temple Okay, David wanted to build the temple and Solomon built it with all the pictures of trees and creation have you read the description of the temple you can find on walls God wanted you have to drop a pomegranate tree here. You have to drop pears tree here. Like, you know, similar description was there. <coughs> this was just like the description of God was sitting in Eden Garden and he pictured, entered Eden Garden in the temple. <laughs> just like the picture of Adam uh, being the high priest. We can see. And the glory of God entered on the temple. And there also the divisions are there. And unfortunately, we all know the history of Israel. Later, the glory of the Lord left the temple. Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they witness the glory of the Lord leaving the temple. And the, the temple was destroyed and rebuilt, but the glory did not return in the history that we have seen. First, temple has become 
a symbol where God can come and meet his people. Look over the period of time, what happened was, first one curtain was introduced, then the, cur the room which has the curtain, walls have come. And the room which has the walls, again other walls have come with another compound, and another compound has come. Now, if people want to meet God, how it has to be, you know? If you and I want to meet God in Jewish temple, we have to stand almost a kilometer away from the Holy of Holies. Gentiles at the end. After Gentiles come, proselytes. And then, then comes ladies. Ladies cannot enter into the temple. Okay? Jewish ladies only. They have to stop there. And then Jewish common people. And then comes courtyard where the temple priests can be there. These are not the people who are worshipping, who are doing the priestly work in the, uh, at the altar. These are just people who take care of the temple. They will be there. And then comes priests. And then comes the high priest. So, temple, the concept of temple, according to Jacob's vision, was where heaven and earth were coming together so very close, has been totally distorted here. If a person like you and me wanted to meet God, we cannot. And let me tell you, in the temple, you and me, we can never meet God. Only high priest once in a year can get the opportunity to meet God in the Holy of Holies. That is the picture of temple. It, it was supposed to be the picture of temple, as I said, in the Eden Garden. It's supposed to be the picture what happened in the Noah's Ark. It's supposed to be the picture what Jacob had experienced. But it has changed completely. Now temple has become a, uh, a stumbling block between humans and God. Now temple has become a barrier because of which we cannot go to God. That happened throughout the history. Even our own history reminds us. Our own people once upon a time could not access the temples. Only certain people, certain kind of communities of people only could access the temple. All could not. So instead of this be instead of becoming a connecting point between God and man, this has become a dividing point between God and man. That is the unfortunate thing. And then come Jesus who said, destroy this temple, I will rebuild it in three days. Which he was talking about his own body. In his incarnation, he brought entire thought of the temple in flesh. Why Jesus could say, can, 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 explain him, I mean, or uh, tell him, tell himself as a temple, because in him resides the 100% divinity, 100% humanity. In him, God and man have come together in such an inseparable manner. God and man cannot be separated. And God and man were brought together in Jesus Christ. In his incarnation, he united humans and God. In his incarnation, he also united man and man. Do you know this? The temple always divided man and from man from man. Jewish temple divided <coughs> high priest <coughs> from the common priest, common priest from the priest, and from the priest to common people, from the common people, gen ladies, Gentiles, slaves. And this temple all divided all people. But Jesus came. He did not become a priest. The word did not become a priest, but the word became a flesh, a generic term in which he united himself with all of us. No Jew, no Gentile. That's why Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Temple has become a wall of separation. Jesus, through his death, he broke down the walls of separation which were built through the law and uh, that's a different concept we have to discuss for a long time. However, through his incarnation, there is no Jew, no Gentile. That's what Apostle Paul writes. No, no Jew, no Gentile, no slave, no free, or no male, no female. All are one in Jesus Christ. 
through his incarnation bringing man and god together he broke down those walls of separation through his sacrifice he offered the right worship to god which adam offered in the beginning then noah offered and now and then abraham offered and we have seen the connections between abraham sacrifice and jesus previously <coughs> he offered the true worship that is from hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 to 12 i mean that's what it is written uh, but christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with the uh, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands because the tabernacle made with hands has brought separation between men and god and uh, uh, but with his own blood he re- he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption so the tabernacle built by men brought separation and that's why when jesus died on the cross what happened you know the curtain torn from top to the bottom the separation has been removed the separation built by the temple has been removed god now is completely available to people from holy of holies everything is open to the person who is standing 2 kilometers away from the holy of holies the gentile can see what's happening in the altar and he can participate in the true worship so jesus he became the true priest of real things not of symbolics okay the purpose of the temple is bringing man and god together according to the vision of jacob which jesus accomplished in his incarnation the purpose of temple is to offer true worship jesus offered the true worship offering himself his own blood he entered the tabernacle the purpose uh, between temple uh, sorry the symbol of temple is bringing entire uh, heaven and earth together that's what jesus has done through his creation and through his death he broke down all the walls and the temple is a symbol 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 we all were fighting behind the symbol and jesus is the reality of that symbol jesus himself came and he is the true temple because of that there is no requirement for temple anymore in jerusalem new jerusalem because we don't require any more of these symbols because god is going to be with them in the scripture we read it is written because the lamb is with them the lord is with the people he is going to be their light we don't require temple in jerusalem because the lord himself is there we have direct access with him we can directly offer worship to him because we have the true worshipper unlike the nimrod who was leading people against the god in babylon unlike adam who failed to offer the true worship but as jesus the true priest he took all of us in him dwells i mean uh, all of us are included in him and he offered worship on our behalf as a true priest so we don't need to go after the symbols because jesus is the one who is offering true worship he is right there in that city so entire city of jerusalem is becoming the temple we don't require the symbolic things that's why there is no temple the as i said the purpose of the temple is to bring heaven and earth together always god is so very eager to be with his people if you read one particular th- if you read bible from genesis till revelation there is one particular thread that will be continuously appearing everywhere that is god is going after his people adam committed sin and he turned his face away from god but he was god was going after him no what time people turned away but god was going after them people no people and babylonian time sorry uh, abraham time god was going after his people going after abraham then moses time he was going after moses and uh, we know he went after the children of israel and brought them out of the land of egypt in the tabernacle he was there with them with the pillar of cloud and pillar of light with them for 24/7 and then he was going after uh, his, his people uh in the temple his glory came down and he came after us in the form of jesus as he said the good shepherd comes after his sheep he came after and then uh, holy spirit have come down to humans and 
you know jesus was ascended and what is the last picture jesus is going to come back again the common thread we find genesis to revelation is god coming close to his people the same thing we have seen in the speaking of life we are worshiping a god who searches for his people he is not a god who seeks people to search him so he is not sitting in heaven asking waiting for people to come to him but he is going after his people such a god who we are worshiping so he has come this is the thread we can find god always want to be with you and me and that the very purpose of the temple is the same where god and his people can meet god wants to be with his people and you know what the main thing we seek in worship you know what is the main thing we seek in our worship is the very presence of god nothing much do you agree with me when we come into the sanctuary what do we seek god give me your presence help me to recognize your presence he doesn't require our praises his very presence itself his very presence itself is a great honor to all of us so when we come to the presence of the lord when we come to the church also what do we seek we seek the presence of the lord and you know what is one of the best ways to seek the presence of god sometimes we feel dry right we feel dry we don't know what to do we don't feel god at all we want to pray but we don't feel to pray we want to read scripture we don't feel to read scripture sometimes even if you read the scripture it will be just like reading some history book we don't feel anything you know if any time you feel so dry where you could not experience the presence of god do this trick i'm telling you it works for 150% find somebody and go tell them about jesus anybody it can be your family member it can be your friend it can be your colleague or anyone if you are not feeling the presence of god and if you are feeling so dry talk to people about jesus because he promised wherever two or three gathered in my name i am there and if he promises he accomplishes this will never fail i'm telling you i tried in my life it worked out it will work for sure and then one one of the best ways to experience the presence of the lord is holy communion so for centuries churches did it discussed and debated the presence of god in the holy communion there are so many perspectives i am not going to discuss about all those perspectives but one thing we can understand from all the perspectives in some mysterious manner the presence of god is there in the holy communion so the purpose of the temple is god meeting his people god bring providing his presence to his people and now the presence of the lord is with us in the form of the holy communion first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 26 says for i have received from the lord that which i also delivered to you that the lord jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup of uh, sorry cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death till he comes let us pray o merciful lord we do not presume to come to this table trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and graced mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table but you are the same lord whose property is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son jesus christ and to drink the blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us amen the lord is so merciful whoever come to him with repentance 
he forgives all their sins so in the name of jesus christ i declare your sins are forgiven so you can be confident to come before the throne of god this is a table not of the church but of the lord and it is for those who love him and for those who want to love him more this is for those who have much faith and for those who have very little you may have been here often often or this must be you might have been here often or this must be your first time it doesn't matter because it is not we who invite you but the lord he invites you to take part in his uh, in the meal with him and he wants those who ever want to meet him he wants them to meet here taking part in the blood and flesh of his own son jesus christ christ celebrating his life so on behalf of our lord jesus christ i would like to invite all of you to come forward and to take part in the communion of the lord where we can celebrate one life together and we can become the true temple come forward please collect your elements of separation no child no adult no male no female no baptized no baptized all all are invited to take part in the meal with him it doesn't matter you are a regular church comer or not if you wish to share one life with Jesus you are invited elements we can participate in the communion together brethren the body of our lord jesus christ which was given for us preserve your body and soul unto your everlasting life take and eat this in remembrance that christ died for you and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving the blood of our lord jesus christ which was shed for you preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life drink this in remembrance that christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful <laughs> 